Welcome everyone to uh, the first in a series of hopefully a lot of webinars uh, that we intend to be doing here at Diverse Solutions, covering a wide variety of topics. Uh, we want to talk everything from you know, email marketing to Facebook, just social media, blogging, and, and any, everything internet marketing related. At the end of the day, we know that you're working hard to build your business, and we want to sort of you know, highlight the experts in their respective fields, have them come and share their opinion. And so today, I wanted to we have a very special guest, Mike Mueller from AreWeConnected.com. And we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook, <laughs> or a lot of it, I should say. Um, Mike is someone that I, I think everyone looks forward to when it comes to wanting to learn everything or know anything Facebook related. Um, he really, really knows this stuff. If you're familiar with some of his work or not familiar with some of his work, you should get familiar with his work. Um, he does a really excellent job, not only at designing some really slick uh, looking Facebook pages, but he also dabbles in a lot of it and he has he, he really knows what he's doing. So, um, Mike, welcome aboard. How are you? I'm doing great, actually. Doing wonderful. Glad to be here. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're going to go ahead and use the hashtag for now, uh, DSU, so if you have any questions, pop on over there. Um, also, feel free to use the chat. I'm sure we're going to move here pretty fast and get things going. But, you know, when it comes to Facebook, for me anyway, and I'm sure for a lot of people, it seems a little bit difficult and overwhelming at first. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do. It's, it's, what is it, Mike? Is it the number one largest social network at this point? Well, it's also the number one site that people actually go and type into a browser and say, exactly. it used to be Google for years, it was Google, and now it's Facebook is the number one site that people go to. So with that said, I think there's a lot of opportunity, but done right, there's a lot of opportunity done wrong, it becomes nothing more than a time suck. Absolutely. And so, and so that, that's kind of what I was hoping to, to discuss today. Um, this, for example, is a Facebook profile. It's not a, not a Facebook page. You know, if I want to connect with Mike, I can go over to his profile, see what he's doing, see what's going on in his personal life. I can leave comments on his wall. I can post pictures, so on and so forth. Um, and what I was hoping to do today was kind of discuss and highlight the differences uh, between a profile and a page, uh, mainly because if I know to connect with Mike Mueller on Facebook and look at his page, well, his page, to me anyway, on first glance, looks just like a profile. So, Mike, I was hoping that we might talk a little bit about, make that distinction, what are the differences and nuances between having a, a Facebook profile or a page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, make you the presenter here and let you take it from there if that works for you. Absolutely. And I it know there's going to be a yours. little bit of a lag. <laughs> Here, let me switch over to my screen. So uh, let me know when you are up, when you've got my profile. I, should be. I got you up and running. Good. We got good speed then. That's a good thing. I actually had my internet go down earlier today, so hopefully it will stay up at least for the next hour. So here's the, here's the basic plan uh, that we're, we're going to do is, and actually, let me go over to, I wanted to actually throw up a couple of different slides. We're going to get back to this, and Ricardo, you can actually send this out a little bit uh, later on. Uh, let me pull up the PowerPoint that you had built. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> because this one, to me, is the most important, uh, and actually, I'll just show it this way instead of running through the show is the most important because Facebook does a horrible job at, at explaining. There, there are three different entities. Typically, I'm going to say there's three different entities. There's actually four. There's also developers. But we're, we don't even have to go anywhere near there. But three that you're going to run into within Facebook, and they're all very different. And whenever you're confused, the easiest, best way that you can, you can figure out what kind of an entity you're dealing with yeah. in Facebook it's just simply ask the question, okay, how do I connect to this? So it's very easy. Um, your friends 
that you've connected to connect to your profile. And so very simply, just ask your ask that question. Okay, how do you connect to this? Well, if it's like my profile that you were showing, you would have a add Mike as a friend. That button would be up there. If it's a page, we're going to show a couple of different pages. There's a like button. We like that. It used to be fan pages. You became a fan of the page, but now it's like button everywhere. And then the third entity we run into a lot is groups, and you become a member of the group. Now, pages and profiles, and what I want to do in this is I want to go very quickly through a whole lot of this stuff and really give you some really good stuff and then get to questions and, and answers and be able, be able to actually uh, point people in the right direction. So uh, that's very simply, that's what we're going to deal with today is pages. And we're going to, we're going to do a little bit about groups and a little bit about profile. And actually, I want to start out with profiles. So I've got, I'm using Google Chrome as my browser. So I have a bunch of different tabs open right now. And I've got a bunch of different shortcuts in my toolbar and things like that. But very simply, this is my profile. And it's very different from my page. My page actually has this long picture, looks very businesslike. And that's important because a lot of you know what we end up doing is we want to we want to present this. This is my my page. This is the personal or the professional version of me. And what ended up happening with Facebook? The same thing that happens with pretty much everybody who's on this call is we found Facebook and we went, hey, this is great. Well, the first thing we did was we found all of our friends, and that was wonderful. We we actually we knew these people and we connected, and that was great. The next thing that we did was we said, because we are in sales, we said, uh, I want to go find all of my clients, my past clients, my future clients, present clients, all that. The problem with that is, and actually, let me see if I can grab that slide again. Uh, let's go to this is what we really want to put out there is we want all of this to, to stay to this is this is our professional side and the problem is we end up with our friends they find pictures of us and <laughs> they tag us in the pictures and they share that with all these clients that we have and we don't want that so what we want to do is we want to actually sort this and there's a couple of different reasons why I think every every real estate agent needs a page. Um, primarily, uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of quick ones. Primarily, pages have an SEO quality to them. Um, they they actually have search engine optimization built in. They have page rank. They are fully indexed by Google. Now that's your page. That is not a profile. That's a page that does that. Your profile is actually very limited as to what Google can see, or any search engine for that matter. The other thing that happens is when you come to a page, this page in particular, this happens to be my page, if you did not like this page, uh, let me go and like my own page. By the way, like your own page, that's a really good way to go about this. So let me unlike my page. So there's a like button. This is, I, I'm going to call it lead capture. What happens when I like this page? I don't actually have like a friend, what I would do is I would have to actually say, hey, will you be my friend? And then that person has to respond and say, yeah, I'll be your friend. Um, I get a lot of friend requests. I think I've 82 friends want to, people I don't necessarily know, but these people want to connect with me. That's great. Uh, I'd much rather they came over to my page and connected with me there. Primarily, uh, and this how it plays in real estate, is a lot of people don't necessarily want to push on that friend button and we're not talking about a sales people. We're talking about your next potential client. They don't necessarily want to push on that little, that friend button and say, hey, will you be my friend or respond to your friend request because they're not so sure about you. Um, it, it's just a human nature thing. If they don't really know you, they're not going to push on that. They don't, Typically, that's the other thing is they have 130 friends. We as sales people in our profile, we get... Uh, a max, we get capped out in Facebook on our profile. This is my profile again. We get capped out at 5,000. Now, that isn't just 5,000 friends. That's also pages that we like. So if we like different pages, that counts as a friend uh, as well. So right now, I'm officially, I'm capped out. And I've got 3,832 friends. Most of them, I don't know. Um, but that's OK. And then the rest of them that make up that, that bulk amount of 5,000, those are all pages that I've liked, because I actually create Facebook pages, and I like everyone that I've done. 
But hey, Mike. Here's, yeah, go ahead. I, I have a question for you on that point, uh, just with respect to friend requests and things like that. Um, what's your sort of, I guess it's not a policy or rule of thumb, but generally speaking, you know, we get bombarded with a bunch of Facebook friend requests. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know all of those people. What do you think is a good sort of rule of thumb? Do you just go by and accept each request, or is there some other sort of strategy involved in terms well, of connecting with those individuals? Yeah, great question. Do you that real estate agent who's farming in your community as well, and you're in your farm, and you're competing against him, and you know he's that agent from across town sends you a friend request. Do you accept it? Um, I'm going to show you the golden ticket. This re, this kind of I accept everybody as far as that goes, but. I don't ex just blanketly accept them. I'm going to go through and I'm going to make room for these 82 people and eventually add them in. Um, the key to my profile and so much within Facebook, privacy and, and all of that is what's called a list. And I'm going, to, I'm going to show you really quickly. We're going to pop over into there and then get over into pages real quick. So with lists, probably the easiest way to find it under account, wherever you're in Facebook, you've always got home profile and account. And this is, I, I think Facebook should do a much better job of this, is uh, put out the list. People don't use lists. So here's, uh, what I did was I went to account and I went to edit friends. And this brings up all of my friends and actually filters by uh, recently interacted and I can actually, all friends, I could do all that kind of stuff. Well, lists, here's a button right here, create a list. And what happens is I can create a list, and then those lists show up over here. And lists are the key. This is the golden ticket to your privacy. This is the key to pretty much everything within Facebook. So what happens in lists, nobody comes into my circle without first going into a list. So if I, and I cleared out some people, so let me see if this works. So Marlene, I'm going to add you, and I'm going to confirm. So what happens when I confirm it is now it's going to say, do you want to add, thanks for adding her, or Mylene, add her to a list. Well, yeah, I do. And I know exactly where I'm going to add her, so it's going to pull up my list. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight lists. And I'm going to put her in that list, and there she goes. Everybody comes into my Facebook page or my profile with a list. And I don't go out and I don't go searching for people, but they all go into that, that bucket. Once I have them in that bucket, Here's probably the best thing that you can do is under your privacy settings. And I'm really, uh, when you have buckets, so what I did was I went to account and went to privacy. And you can see uh, Facebook is, is trying to work on this and, and change this. I'm custom. And the way I get to custom settings is down here. It's an itty bitty little link. Let me go back to privacy. The little itty bitty link under here, customize settings. And then what I'm able to do is I'm able to say, okay, family, I want, I want things that I share. I want my family to be visible to everyone, friends of friends, friends only, or watch this, customize. And then what I can do is I could say, it's kind of like the specific people, that kind of thing. Well, I can make it visible to only my real friends, and I can also hide it. Now, this is specific people, or what Facebook doesn't tell you is it's also lists. So if you go back to my list, I have a list called Realtors. So actually, let me start typing it in. And it doesn't say that this is a person, but it's, I know it's actually my list. So I can hide my family from the Realtors. And I could save that setting. So it shows up to everybody except for people I've put in that bucket. So with your privacy settings, the key to all of your privacy settings, and I'm very open, but you really want to be safe, the key to all of it is create a list. And then once you've got that list, you can adjust your privacy and you can show different things. And so actually on my profile, when I go to actually write something, now what I've got, because I've created and put people in lists, I've got this little box over here. And right now it says everyone, but I've got this customize. And guess what happens? It looks just like that setting that was in my privacy. I can show it to everybody or I can show it to specific people and I can say in specific people, I can go right back to that list and say, you know what, I want this post to only show to this. So if your friends and family are getting tired of all this real estate stuff, this is a great way to show it just the people that you put in that bucket. Or hide it from just those people. So it starts with creating a list. So you've got to create a list. 
And the other thing that happens is when you log into Facebook, Facebook will take you typically to what's called your news feed. Um, and this is still, this is kind of based on my profile. So the news feed uh, will default to top news. This is, meh, you know what, it's a popularity contest. So when then whatever happens in all of my friends, the popular stuff gets pushed to the top. This is the default setting. If I wanted to go as it happens, most recent, this is uh, everybody. Now I've got 5,000 people. And like I said, I don't know most of them. Uh, 4,900 and you know or so I don't know but the 100 that I really do care about I've actually put into a list so when I have most recent what I can do is I can come down here and here's my list again and I can pick here's my close 100 here's my motorcycle buddies this is something I'm passionate about here's great real estate people and then what it's doing is it's going to show me just those that I've put in that bucket as they happen so as they happen they go boom right there and it's a great way to filter out the people who uh, you don't really need to pay a whole lot of attention to. To filter out the, the scary people, huh? I'm sorry? <laughs> to filter out the scary people, huh? Well, you saw that in my okay. list. I've actually got a list. So what you can do with, with your list is you can actually put people in. I'll go back to my edit friends and show you my list. I've got a scary people list. And I actually don't have, I think there's like one person in there. but. What do you do with that real estate agent across town who wants to be your friend? Well, what you can do is you can put them in a, uh, a list. They don't know that they're in the list, by the way, unless you make that list public. They're never going to know they're in scary people or competing real estate agents. But then what I can do is I can hide all of my friends so they can't get to my friends in my privacy settings. I can exclude my friends and certain posts and things like that from that. So I can still be friends with that real estate agent but not really. I'm putting them in a box. And that's my scary people list. So or whatever question, you want it to be. Here's a question from Deborah Davis, one of our attendees. Uh, she'd yeah. like to know if we can put people in more than one list, or do you recommend against that? Or do no. you recommend that being a good practice? Absolutely. So, you know, I've got real estate people and I've got motorcycle buddies, and I've got some that are both. Right, they ride and they're you know. So, what you can do is like Dale Chumbly. I'll use him at the top. I can actually, you can see he's actually in two different lists. He's also now in my close 100 list. So I can put him in multiple lists. Now the list with the most restricted privacy is always going to win. By the way, so if I put him in scary people and I've locked that privacy for that that particular group that uh, list down, he's not going to see everything. And so, really, you have to think about this when you when you set these things up. But I can put them in multiple versions. And then the best thing I think is is actually going to that newsfeed. And here's what I do in the morning. Here's what I would do if I was a real estate agent. I would connect with all of my past clients, future clients, present clients. I would put them in a list. Uh, call them A's, B's, and C's. Whatever you want to do, whatever makes sense to you. Put them in a list. They're never going to know they're in a list. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to most recent, and I'm going to sort by that list. And first thing in the morning, because we talked about this not taking a whole lot of time, I'm going to check in with that list. And so what I've done is I've saved. Once I've done that filter, I've saved it so that like great real estate people, I've saved that as a button, as a, uh, as a bookmark, if you want to call it that. So here's what I will do first thing in the morning is I'll check in, and I just call it news, and it will pull up my particular list. And what I've done in doing that is I just went down here and I said, here's who I want. Let's say my motorcycle buddies. Here's everything my motorcycle buddies are doing. And all I did now is I saved that. And what it does is it saves all of that. And that's the key to actually going in and checking and, and making sure you know, things are going fine with all of my clients if this was you know, my client list or what have you. And I'd be able to, you know, just go right on through there and go, oh, that's a great picture or what have you. Great way to just, you know, filter out what you need to do and, you know, the people that are going to refer that next client to you. So very simply, that's your profile, that's your list. Let's get over into pages. So on my profile, um, let's go start a page. First of all, you're going to actually have to write this one down because it's not very easy. Um, if you have not started a page, actually, I'm going to show you, here's a shortcut. So we know this is a page, 
facebook.com forward slash Coca-Cola, right? Everybody knows this is a page. Why do we know it's a page? Well, because Mike told me there'd be a like button on every page. And there is. Um, so we know that this entity is a page. There's 47 people in behind this page who actually operate this page. We don't know who they are. Um, and, and that's okay, because Coca-Cola has 47 different people um, administering to this page. So this page, if I push on the like button, what happens is this is lead capture. So Facebook uh, has a really great thing that they only do with pages. I, when I typed in facebook.com forward slash Coca-Cola, it didn't take me to wall. It didn't take me to info. It took me to home, and which is not necessarily home. This is a welcome tab. So one of the best things about Facebook pages is you can create, this is what I do for a living, by the way. Um, I create this tab, this application that is the first thing that you're going to see. And what Facebook is uh, able to do is deliver this. And this actually lives on a different server and it's you know delivered here. But what does Coke want us to do? Well, what do they really want us to do? They want us to push this like button. So when we push on this like button, this is lead capture. And I call it lead capture because what just happened? The like button goes away and it's gone. Uh, everything's still there, but the like button's gone, and it's not replaced by an unlike button. They actually hide the unlike button way down over here on the left-hand side, and you can see 28 million people like this page. Well, now I like this page, too, and I just told all my friends, hey, I like Coke. Actually, I like Diet Coke, but what I wanted to show you here is if you go to any page, there's a little link right under here which will take you to create a page. Now, that will take you to this. Now, the very simple way to get there, if you want to actually write this down, is facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create dot PHP. Here's what you're going to be presented with is, and this is, I'm going to say Facebook really doesn't get real estate. Um, you're going to be presented with six different options. What kind of a page do I want to create? And here's your first mistake is you're going to pick local business. And then under local business, you're going to come on down and you're going to say, you know what, real estate, because this makes sense, right? I'm a local business. I'm real estate, blah, 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 blah. Here's all of what this does, what any one of these options do for the most part. And I'm just going to say you're going to stick with any one of the top three. For the most part, what all it does is it just it determines what boxes you have available on your info tab of the page that you're going to create. And that's it. That's all it does. So by changing the category, it changes the, the boxes that are there. And unfortunately, Facebook really doesn't get real estate. Because when you do this, and you say local place or business, and you say real estate, the boxes that are available for you are parking lot hours, or parking lot and hours. Parking lot as in, like, do you have valet parking? I don't know any real estate agency that has valet parking. And really, I don't know anybody who actually has hours in real estate. So the boxes that are available under that category suck. Facebook just doesn't get you. Here's my thought, what I think is the best one, or, or a great place to start. Choose category. I'm a brand or a product. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to go to website, because we all have a website. And then you put in the title, you agree to the Facebook Terms of Service, and you get started. Speaking of which, Facebook Terms of Service, four pages is completely different. The Terms of Service on a profile says that you cannot put anything of commercial value. Let me go back over to my profile. You cannot put anything of commercial value into this box right here. Anything like, hey, I'm holding an open house. Here's the link. Officially, that's a violation of Facebook's Terms of Service. And they do that on purpose. Um, and people do get their, their profiles if people flag that as a violation, because any one of these things you can flag, if people do that, it does, it could, uh, and I know everybody does it, but it could, all of a sudden, your profile and all of your friends, zapped, gone. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. The terms of service for pages, totally opposite. You, they will they will give you hints on how to best use your page and put commercial content. And that's why, by the way, I say you should always like your page because now that I like it, that lead capture hey, Mark. Part, yep. I lost your audio. Oh, you did? 
Can you hear me now? Ricardo? 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 <laughs> Ricardo? 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 Can you hear me? Sounds like you're hearing me. Looks like I'm... Yeah. Ricardo? Okay, you hear it. Good. I'm going to continue on. Because I heard you, but then you dropped. No, I'll continue on. So, getting back into uh, your Facebook profile. So, on my profile, once I've done that, I'm going to put my page as the place that I'm going to work. And uh, that's a different hack altogether. But let me get back over to pages real quick. So what I want to do is I want to use website. I'm going to title my page. And then I'm going to agree to term service and get started. And that's going to bring me over to a page. Let me pull up one. Um, just pull up one of my tests. I've got a lot of different pages. And I just use them uh, primarily to test different things. This is one of them. So this is Mike's Test Kitchen number four. Um, and it has wall, and it has info, and it has all the pictures, and all that kind of stuff. But Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. With that. But because we're able to, let's actually go and mess with some stuff. So given that, I'm going to edit my page. This is the back end of my page. One of the first things you're going to want to do is age restrictions, anyone. 13 and over is what you want. If you choose any of these others, by the way, it will automatically restrict, your page will not, I just found this out, it will automatically restrict and your page will not show up for your vanity URL. It will actually make people sign in before they see it. We don't want that. We actually want our page to be visible to everybody because they're going to come from Google. They're going to come from search engines. They're not going to be logged into Facebook. We want them to be able to do that. So starting right here, this is the default setting. I'm going to show you the back end of all of your default settings really quickly. So if you want to actually make a page invisible right now and work on it, get it right, la 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 la, and play with it, this is what you would do is you would say only admins can see this page, and that would be you. And of course, you're going to add another admin to this, and I'm going to show you how. But age restrictions, uh, wall tab shows all posts. We want that. Default landing tab. So any one of the tabs that I've got on here, I can choose as the first thing. If you have not liked my page or you are not signed into Facebook, here's the first thing you're going to see. And that's what Coke delivered us to, that home tab. So any one of my tabs, I can pick and choose and say, this is where I want you to go. And like I said, this is my test kitchen, so I play with a bunch of different things in here. We can also block people and things like that. But uh, the other thing that Facebook just changed recently was my ability to actually post as my page and comment as my page, but also get notifications. We used to not get notifications. So once you have a page, then you can come in here and you can actually, yeah, send me notifications. When somebody comments, when somebody does something, I want to be notified so that I can respond to that. And so send me that notification. And then, you know what, when I'm on this page, I want to comment as Mike's Test Kitchen. Or what I can do is I can actually comment as my profile. So if I uncheck this, I'm commenting as my profile. And then you can play with the changes and things like that. Um, set your settings, manage permissions, basic information. This is your info tab. And you can see your category. It used to be you couldn't change your category. Now you can. So now you can change all of these different things. And if you say local business, and then movie theater? Well, I don't really want movie theater. I want real estate. Let me go back to uh, find where did real estate go? Can you hear me now, by the way? I can hear you just fine. And you just skipped it. There it is. There it is. OK. So here's, and you, you can see my info tab did not change a whole lot. So I get an address. I get hours of operation and parking lot. And price range, what's that got really to do with real estate? So I don't really get this. Um, so really what I want is I'm going to put it as a brand product. And I'm going to, and you can play with this up until the point where you get 100 likes. 100 likes on your page, 
this will automatically turn off and then you can never change this. So I like website, like I said, and then I get the different boxes. So right now, go create a page, go play with this, see what you like. By the way, if I don't put anything in this box, it doesn't show up. If I do, it's fine, but I only get the boxes that the category changes. Um, profile picture, next one down. So I uploaded this picture. If you actually go over to, here, I'll bring up my Facebook page, that's a really long picture. It's all one picture. And if you actually go to adjust this, so the profile picture, it's one image. And I, you know what? I could have a nice little square or what have you. But the problem, there's actually a secret thing. If I upload a huge picture, and let's say I uploaded something like this, and it was, um, I hear a lot, 200 pixels by 600 pixels. If I did that, then I would not have the ability to change my thumbnail. It would look, I'll show you exactly how it would look. It'll look like that every time I left a comment. It would be a nice little square with something totally unrecognizable. But here's a magic formula. It's, it used to be 200 by 600. It's now 180 pixels wide. It's 180 this, 540 pixels tall or less. If you're anywhere within there, you have the ability to upload this picture and then change the thumbnail. And you can move the thumbnail in and out and around and wherever you want, but you can only do that if you're less than 180 by 540. So if you're 541, you won't have that opportunity. And so um, that's one of, the, one of the great things to do. The other thing that you could do is under Featured, I'll show you on my page, I can actually feature pages that my page has liked and I can also feature myself, and that would be me as an admin. So what you can do is you can add multiple admins to a page. So if you have a marketing team or if you have a team of people, they can all participate now in your page. And you can, I don't want to say out them, but like Coke, doesn't show you who is behind Coke. But if you wanted to and you were running a page for Sunny Anchors, what you could do very simply is you could uh, say, hey, I'm Mike Mueller, and I'm the page owner of this page, you know, living the Sunny Acres lifestyle. So you have that ability these days. And like I said, you can have a marketing assistant or somebody doing all of your, all of your work if you really wanted to, and they would be doing it as you. They don't have to sign in as you. They would just be doing it as a page. Next one down is the marketing. Um, Here's one of the, I love advertising on Facebook. I love running campaigns. It's a great, absolutely wonderful thing. Don't do this and drive people to your page if you've got nothing on your page or you don't have a landing tab set for them. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money. Um, if you run an ad and I click on that ad and it shows up to me and I click on it and it takes me over to your wall or your info tab and there's nothing compelling there and I walk away and they don't push that like button, You've just wasted uh, everything that you paid to get me to do that. So I'm not a big fan of advertising initially once you first get your Facebook page. Once you get it up and running, once you have a landing tab that you're delivering them to, then it's perfectly fine. Then go and look at running ads. Like boxes, create an alias is really important because if you actually look at my Facebook profile, I've got a Facebook vanity URL. That's what they they're calling the alias, which is facebook.com forward slash Mike Mueller. So if we were in the grocery store and I turned around to you and I said, or on my marketing materials, and I said, I'm at facebook.com Mike Mueller. That's nice and simple to remember. Well, you could do that with a profile and you could do that with a page. So on my Facebook page, I'm actually Mike Mueller Consulting. And I would have liked to have gotten Mike Mueller, except I had already taken it. And unfortunately, I can't untake Mike Mueller and then put it over on my page. You only get to do this really once with a Facebook page. And so I'm kind of stuck. And you know, it is what it is. So learn from that. So if you are a, if you're thinking about, you know, Sunny Acres, don't use Sunny Acres on your profile, use it on your page because that's where you really want everybody to go to. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, and that's the marketing tab. Manage admins. So I can manage admins. And very simply, I can add a new admin. And this would be my new marketing assistant. And so I could very simply start typing in somebody's name. Uh, let's see. There he is. And I can save changes. 
this is how hard it is to add an admin. So now I've got a new marketing assistant for Mike's Test Kitchen. Ricardo is now on there. Very simple. All I did was I just, he was one of my friends that I added him, or I can type in the email address that he signs into Facebook with. So your marketing assistant, um, that's a great way to actually add people or your other team members. Put more than one person on every one of your pages. And I'm going to tell you to do that because should something happen, like your profile, and you get zapped accidentally, things happen in Facebook all the time, you did nothing wrong, but your profile just goes bling, you're the only one with the keys to your page. So like I will add my wife, I'll add you know, my daughter, I'll add somebody so that I can go back that I trust, that I can go back and I can say, hey, will you add me back to this page? I, had to, I lost my profile, I had to create a whole new one. Um, so always add somebody to a page. Here's the, the other side of the coin. If I add, let's say, Susie Q as my marketing assistant, and you know she's fresh out of high school, and I have her come in every other you know week or what have you, or she just does it from home, that's great until I fire her. And when I fire her, there is no hierarchy of, hierarchy of admins. So Susie Q can very easily, like Ricardo, can very easily come over and click on remove and take me out of my page. Uh, so before you fire your assistant, who is an admin on your Facebook page, just a just a quick little thing, easy to do. Don't do it. Here, I'll take you off. <laughs> Not that you would, but it's very easy to for anybody to remove anybody. Uh, Facebook apps. So uh, as you add apps, and this is actually things that I do, and I build in apps and things like that, and these create tabs. Most of them will create tabs. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do with apps, and there are a lot of different apps that you can bring in. The mobile aspect, I want to show you very quickly, if you, because we, what we want to do is we want to get away from the computer. So I've got a Facebook page. Every Facebook page on the back end, and this is Mike's Test Kitchen, gives you a unique, and it doesn't matter if you write this down because I really don't use it, nobody actually likes this page, but gives you a unique email address for mobile. So what I can do with this email address is I can take this email address and it's secret to this page, and only I can see this because I'm an admin. Of course, you can see it now too. But So you can take this, add it to your smartphone as a contact, and I'm going to call it Facebook Page Update. And here's the email address. Now when I take a picture, let's say I'm out on broker tour or what have you, I don't want it to go to my profile. I want it to go to my page. Or I want, you know, I want to write a, a status update to my Facebook page because all these great apps that are on our smartphone go to our profile. We want things to go to our page. Here's the key to it. Here's my email address. So I save that as a contact. I could take a picture. I could take a video. I could do anything send it to this email, and it shows up on this page. Not all of my Facebook pages, just this one. So it's a great way to stay connected to my page and actually update my page mobily. Insights are kind of like Google Analytics. Of course, I'm not going to have any insights on this one. Sorry about that, because uh, this page kind of is, just doesn't really exist. But insights are great. They show you exactly where people are coming from and things like that. So that's a quick, very quick tour. Here's the best way, and I know I'm going really quick, but I want to get to questions here. Here's the best way to share stuff on your Facebook page. And I'm going to say page because um, here's my blog, by the way. It's areweconnected.com. Go check it out. Do all that kind of stuff. But what I want to do is I want to show you, okay, so I wrote a great post on here, and it's uh, all about, hey, today. <laughs> that's what it's about. And I've got a Facebook share button. And you might see this. This might be, let's say, an article in New York Times or what have you. Anytime you see a share, anytime you see I've got a like button down here, anytime you see any of these things, it always goes to your profile. There's, there's nothing out there that says, hey, I want to share this to my page. So the way to get around that is, because if I share this, it's going to share it on my wall. That's my profile. I want it to go over to my page. So what I want to do is I want to actually take the permalink to this. And so I'm at areweconnected.com, which isn't the permalink. The permalink for this particular post, I can highlight this and I can right click and I copy the link address. Or I could just click on the title and with a WordPress blog, it will bring up the permalink and then I can copy this. So when I come over to my page, here's the best way to share information. Oop, 
let me get this, it'll say link. And then all I have to do is I have to type this in. And then what happens is when it attaches, it goes over to that blog post and it says, okay, we know you want to share this. We search this. Here's the title. Here's a description. And here's an image. Oh, actually, we found seven images. Which one would you like to use? So a couple of quick things. Um, you know what? I like that image. That's the image I want to use. Uh, this title, um, you know what? I could change it. Even though it is my blog post, it could be in New York Times, it doesn't matter. I can change the description, I can change the title. And so this is what's called anchor text. This is fully indexed by Google. I want to create a title, I want to create a description that is better than that. And I'm going to share that with all the people who have liked my page. And then it's going to show up in their home stream and all that kind of stuff. The same thing could happen, actually let me give this a refresh. Um, I pulled up a YouTube video, and you've seen this in Facebook, YouTube videos. They're wonderful. They play. Here's the share button. It's way down here. It's going to go to my profile, but I don't want it to go to my profile. I want to share it on my page. So in, face, in YouTube, the share button here opened up this little screen, and then I've got, there's the link I want. So now when I come over here, I'm going to use that same link, and I'm going to go, dink and attach, went over, found the video, and then I can retitle this, I can retitle that, or it, I can change thumbnails sometimes. And then I can always write something about this. Say, we love the Beeb, and then we can share. So now what happens is, and I'll go ahead and delete this down the road, but uh, it plays the video right within Facebook, just like on my profile, but it's done on my page. So. I think that's a, a quick tour. Did we cover some of everything? <laughs> what do you I, think? I think we definitely did. Um, it looks like we have a couple of questions. So <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. the one that I wanted to kind of jump on because I told myself it was a good question. Um, looking for it. If anyone else has any questions, go ahead and drop them into the go to meeting chat and I'll go ahead and pick them on out. Absolutely. Um, a few folks are asking, so Glenton Turn wants to know, how do you invite people to your Facebook page? And I think a good question to follow up yeah. on that is uh, someone had asked about, is it you know a good courtesy or common courtesy if somebody sends you a friend request and you don't want to friend them, but you want to add them to your Facebook page, is it proper to ask them to friend you or like your page instead? No, I think that I think that's absolutely fine, especially if you have a page uh, that you can redirect them to. Because you know what, typically what ends up happening is any anybody who's out there, whether you're connected to them or not, I'm looking for somebody I might not be connected to. Um, so add as a friend. Well, I I don't know you yet. We're not connected, but there's always this message button, and so I can say I can always send a message even though I'm not connected to this person. I can always send a message to them. But how do you get more fans? How do you get more people to like your page? A couple of quick things. I'm going to change this link to my page very simply instead of it being what's called a, a community page or a wiki page. I'm also going to do things like this. I'm going to actually put up a post every now and then saying, hey, I think you should go like my page. Um, so this post basically says, hey, I'm, you know what? I, maybe you don't know about this, but hey, go like my page. On my info tab, I'm going to, and this is all within Facebook, uh, one of the links that I'm going to put in here is my Facebook page. And I'm going to put it right up at the top. A lot of people don't go to the info tab, and that's fine, um, but a lot of people do. Uh, your website, I've got on my website, I've got a number of different little Facebook Fs. All of them are going to go over to my Facebook page, not my profile. I have a like box that actually is going to deliver people to my Facebook page. And then I wanted to show you, uh, you know what, I'm going to create an email here. Here's my email signature. My email signature, this goes to my Facebook page, not my profile. So everything I do, I want people, to, I'm driving people, my marketing, everything I'm doing, I want to drive people to my page, not my profile. Here's a, another question from Kendall Young. Hi, Kendall. Hi, Kendall. She, she wants to know what a good post frequency is for managing the content over, like, on your Facebook page. 
Yeah, so great question. Um, I'm going to say once a day. Um, if you really bombard people, there are studies out there that show less than once a day is actually better. Um, and there are studies out there who say, you know, four, five, six, seven times a day. It kind of depends on the audience, kind of depends on what your page is all about. Um, I'm much, I'm much, I am a huge fan of, I'm going to say, I'm, I don't want to title them community pages, but uh, community or lifestyle styled pages about living in a community. Because it isn't about me, and my page is a bad example of that, but um, I would, if I, my farm, if it was Sunny Acres, it would be living the Sunny Acres lifestyle, and I would be talking about and you know everything about Sunny Acres. Now, if I, people are going to actually you know clamor to that, they're going to actually migrate to that naturally. Um, but if I start bombarding them with everything real estate or bombarding them you know multiple times a day, they're going to unlike the page. So it depends on the audience. But I'm going to say once a day or less is just fine. Just make sure you respond to everybody's comments too. So that said, Mike, uh, I think I know that you've worked with a lot of uh, real estate agents on helping them create custom landing tabs. Um, someone had asked over here about, you know, how to use the FBML application to create a custom landing tab. But we moved mm -hmm. away we moved away from that, haven't we? <laughs> we did. Um, here is, and, and you can tell, see on the side, what they did was they put them on the side, and you can tell that there's a little bracket thing. These are the old, what's called static FBML. And so here is, and unfortunately, um, this is a static FBML tab. There's a lot more stuff that you can do um, with the new version. And to do that, um, actually, I'll, I'll show you really quick. Uh, to do that, you have to have a developer account. You have to go in. There's a whole big, long, involved thing. But I create now Facebook applications. And those Facebook applications create the same thing that would be down here. Here, let me actually pull up. Um, they, they would create the tabs that are down here without using that static FBML. So there's a lot of different things. I'll, I'll pick on a real estate one. Um, you know, here's one, and it's actually populating his real estate, um, you know, the search. Or if you, you know, you've got, here's one for Inez, and all she wanted on this particular tab, it doesn't all have to be a welcome tab, but on this particular one, she just wants people to fill out their form. Um, so you can do a lot of different things with this application side that you couldn't do with static FBML. You couldn't have anything dynamic like this happen. It just wouldn't work. So I'm I'm a huge fan of this this new thing. I'm a huge fan of this. So this is a great thing. So now that we're kind of going through some examples, what do you think when building those landing pages, you know, it's 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 a lead conversion tool. Uh, what do you think are some good yeah. elements to put into it? Um, is is a great header design? Do we just copy and mirror the design that we have in our blogs? What are some good elements you think are, are worth putting in there? Here's here's what I think is the best uh, version because I, I, I just accidentally went through this. Here's the best thing. So here is a welcome tab. And what's the first thing you really see other than the branding of? Because here's what happens with the landing tab is when I build a landing tab for a real estate client, primarily the main number one focus of this is get them to push on that like button. And that's that's the number one focus, unfortunately. It isn't about your brand. It isn't, you know, there is a lot of stuff here. I mean, it's about the colors. It's about, you know, here's the links. And if you want to find, you know, homes and lifestyles or whatever, and, you you know, you can travel back with this and go, go to his YouTube channel. But the thing is, a video, we stop and we play videos. So we're going to push on this video. And I can actually set this to autoplay so that it automatically shows up. And then, so you land on this, and it's going to autoplay the video. And in this particular one, Jason's going to say, hey, uh, welcome to my page. Here's what I'm about. Here's what this page is about. And do me a favor. Go click on that Like button. And he's going to do a quick, just 30-second video. I mean, it doesn't take all that long. And he's going to tell us, go click on that Like button. And so we are. And 
that's what I think is just a wonderful way of going about this for a landing tab to convert visitors, the casual visitor or what have you, whatever you marketed to get them there. If you're not getting them to convert over to that like, uh, you're losing them because they may never come back. Show us some examples of some, some, yeah, absolutely. Do you want to show us some examples of some uh, landing sites for real estate agents? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say, so very simply, areweconnected.com, this is probably the easiest way to do this, is you can go to my site, which is areweconnected.com forward slash Facebook. Uh, there's a tab right up here at the top. And what I've done is I've done a cool iris, and I have um, quite a few. I'll just let this scroll on through. Quite a few. I've done over 600 of these applications. Most of them are for real estate. Any one of them, you can pick, you can choose, you can say, you know what, I want to see what this one looks like. When you do, um, actually, I picked on the wrong one. Let me go back over to, I want, I want an application. Uh, so I was originally creating those as FBML. Nowadays, I'm creating them as applications. And so let me pick on a real estate one. So here's a real estate one. You can see it's got his header and all the branding uh, right there, but it also has a video. And if you want, you hover over the top and you'll see a little blue link here. We can actually go right over to that application and see this application within Facebook. And so you want examples? This is a great way of sh seeing examples. And that's at areweconnected.com forward slash Facebook right up here at the top. And you can play with all of them. There's a lot of them out there. Awesome, Mike. Does anyone else have any questions that uh, maybe something we didn't cover? For those of you, I know um, one or two of you had asked if there's going to be a recording because you want to catch up on the first half of this. Uh, we will have the recording available sometime next week. Um, in the meantime, if anyone has any other questions, uh, pop them into the chat. We'll go over them. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap it up soon. Okay. Um, very quickly, one thing I, I forgot to show you, which I think is, is a critical thing, in photos. Okay. So on my profile, uh, what ha used to be, well, what okay. still is, is anybody can tag any picture that's in my profile uh, unless I set that up differently. In pages, nobody besides me could tag any pictures, which, you know what, if I've got a community page and let's say there's a Fourth of July parade and there's a whole bunch of pictures that I take and I put them up there and I put them in an album, I want people to be able to come over to that album and tag their neighbors, right, because that's going to drive more traffic back to my page. So one of the best ways of doing that, and you can't do that by, by naturally just setting this up. So what you have to do, oops, let me go over to wall and go to the back end of my page, which is the edit page, and I'm going to go down here to apps. This is a super secret thing that Facebook, I don't know why they don't tell more people about this, but in the settings, I'm going to go over, oops, not that one, in the go to app, what I need to do is nobody would ever know that this exists is within the app settings for photos, I have the ability to allow fans to add photos and allow fans to tag photos. And so when I set up new pages, I will usually go over and turn this on uh, for people because they don't know it exists. So just one of those weird little things is, and it's under apps, so you go to apps, you go to photos, and it's go to app. And then I want the ability to allow my fans to tag the photos. Because ultimately, that's what you want. You want engagement. You want people to say, that's my neighbor. And that way, that neighbor gets tagged. And that way, that neighbor comes over to your Facebook page. Here's uh, one last question, Mike, that we have from Kendall. Uh, <laughs> can, you go Yay, Seth, Kendall! can you go Seth Godin and have a different landing page for first timers versus returning visitors? What are your thoughts on that? Well, you, you can't have a. No, you can't. Uh, you can only have a face. You can only designate one tab that people will go to once they've liked your page, and that that's a landing tab. So you only get one. Now, once you like that tab, then you automatically, every time you come back to that page, you're going to go back to the wall 
automatically. That's where it's going to deliver. Facebook's going to deliver you. So what you can do is every one of your tabs, whether it's an info tab or the wall or any one of the tabs that you have, you you see you've got actually a permalink here. So over on your website, if you wanted to show people just your photos, this would be the link I would use to that photo tab. So there's a lot of different ways that you can play with this outside of Facebook. But really, that landing tab is the most crucial one. And within Facebook, there's only one thing that you get to designate, and that's the landing tab. Um, someone had asked about doing some sort of offering incentive, like the first, I don't know, 25 or 100 people to like our page enter, <laughs> enter to win a free, I don't know, Starbucks card or something. No, that's that. Okay, so that's great. I love that idea. Here's one of the big problems with uh, with promotions, and it's part of one of the things you have to be you have to know about. You cannot run a promotion that that to enter that promotion, I have to comment, or I have to like, or I have to do something within a Facebook page. It's official in their terms of service, and they will delete your page if you do that. So you can't say, "Hey, upload a video or upload a picture," and we're going to give away a you know a free iPad 2 to you know the person who has the most likes on their picture that they've uploaded. So there's a lot of different things that you can't do with a Facebook promotion. But actually, giving away things to somebody who has liked your page, that's okay. If that's all they do is they've just liked your page, they've become a, a like of your page. And then the last question from Emmy Nicholson. Hey! Can, page is classified under a business. Can I change it to a brand or product? You can, as long as less than a hundred people have liked your page. Which you know what my my title and my description. Luckily, I picked website, but my title and my description are locked in stone. Um, I, well, I shouldn't say that. So my title is locked in stone. So I can't change my title at all. But I can change whatever whatever I have for a category, so I'm I'm good. Um, yeah, it's entirely up to you whether you want to swap them around or what have you. But yeah, chances are you can probably just change this anytime you like. Awesome. Well, we're gonna wrap it up there. We're gonna make this recording available for you to play at a later date, Mr. Mueller. You are. You 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 earn the Rabizi badge of approval and awesome sauce. <laughs> the awesome sauce badge of approval. Thanks, thank you very much, Mike, for walking us through, and uh, we certainly appreciate your time. Absolutely, I'm more than happy to. Uh, I I love doing this, and so we we should actually give you guys a plug too, right? So <laughs> everybody needs to. You've got a vanity URL. For your Facebook page, everybody who's on this needs to go over to facebook.com forward slash diverse solutions. Just type that in and you will be delivered right to their page and go push that like button. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for having us, everybody, and we'll talk to you all soon.